individuals two weeks. That's going to probably kick this thing off since we've got a quorum. It's probably for 10 or Uh, we have no members of the public online nor here. Um, we could be approved to uh, last meeting minutes. It's, it's being oh. recorded. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Yeah. <laughs> Just in time. Take my pants off because it's very. Only you. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's so I can walk through the narrative and then reference it in first and on paper or all right here. It's either it's yeah. 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 No, it, it's I'm trying to lock it. So I oh, I think it's a push. Yeah, push the uh, um, yeah. push it in. Oh, like. Horizontal. Oh, now it's there. Hey, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <Good> sure. <laughs> Probably in a bit the same situation. Right. It's bottled and rising up. <laughs> so our revenues were uh, 15.2 million. Uh, lots and garages just under 12 million and 11.7. Working uh, meters, 3.2 million. Uh, miscellaneous revenue, interest, both right around 131,000. Uh, this exceeded our modified budget by 1.3. So, looking at our two and then 22, 23 modified, we had ramped up the budget. Lightly over the prior year, but we exceeded that most notably in the lots and garages side of the house. Um, our visitor revenue uh, came back a little stronger, or you know, much stronger than we had anticipated. Our permit revenue is the one that's still struggling to come back just with the office worker. Sure. Sorry, I have a few to start early. <laughs> You're the one that needs to leave early, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This thing, some things written in papers, right? Uh, downtown not being bad, we're better in San Francisco, we're better in Oakland. Yeah, yeah. It, all the I've seen some of those seen. And so, how do we put a baseline? Yeah, you know, and this is, I we did use both lawyers to say we're not parking for here, but yeah. um, that says what was you know the benchmark, right? And so was that 18, 19? Was that 17, 18? I, I don't know, I don't care. I'm gonna reference that number 18, 19. Right. But, but just so we collectively agree that's the right type of benchmark to be looking at. And you know, just looking at year to year and 
we all have this in our businesses or in our walks of life. The past three years are relatively useless to look back on. Yeah, but, right? yeah, 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 it, yeah, it's interesting because it's year over year, but it doesn't mean a ton yeah. when we're talking about where we, we should set the bar yeah. at and what we should be measuring to. So just to touch on that, our 18, 19, and I have made myself a note to reference it rev, relative to the revenue side of the house. Our monthly revenue in 18, 19 was 6 million. This year was 4.6. Our visitor revenue was 9 million. It was 7.2 this year. Meters was 4.2, 3, 3.2 now. So total, we're about 3 million less in our lots and garages and 1 million less in our meter now. Um, bad, 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 um, down, 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 and now it's just, are we now at what we could consider kind of that new normal number until we see some big jumps in that activity, whether it's the permit side or the activity side, the transit revenue or business revenue side. So I guess where my head is on uh, this is um, measuring to what people think is the norm, or, or, or what we liked, or what we've accepted at that point in time. There's a new norm that's approaching us now, right? And I think, and, and so whether that's a council saying you need less, you know, parking in your buildings going forward, or there's less lots around, or there in any of these type of things, I think this committee needs to think about how do we obviously have more monetization of what we have, but also setting expectations of other people that whatever happened in the past is interesting, but there is a new norm here that we have to work our way into. And, and, and to me, it's less about, it's funny come from a CFO, but it's less about the, the dollars it's about the, it, it, it all comes down to that. Yeah, but, but it, the, my, my comments here are less about dollars, but more about setting people's expectations going forward about, you know, are we back? Are we not back? You know, are, and, and then, frankly, there is no back. Uh, and, and it's that way of thinking about it that I, I think we, we need to talk about on this committee and uh, we need to stop apologizing for being down year over year and stuff like that. We need to be leading more about where, where is it that we're going with the new realities. Yeah, so I think that will come in some respects in our next, you know, budget uh, cycle. Sorry, we're jumping in. No, no, no. I, want to, but, yeah. uh, I mean, look, I mean, we're a small enough group. We can have just kind of more candid conversations about the times, I think. Um, that, that resonates with us. And then, you know, there is no expectation, at least right now, that we're going to get back to 18, 19, like that. There's a hope that the activity levels incrementally increase. And I think we would build some level of that into our budget, but it isn't going to be a, you know, 30% increase year over year to get us back there in short order. Um, so we are looking at that and we do look at all of those types of activity whether it's the convention center, the SAP center, um, just outdoor events, monthly permits, what kind of activity, what kind of questions are we getting around? Who wants it, who needs it, you know, that kind of thing. So um, we are looking at it, but unfortunately, I think we're going to be closer to that, you know, $15 million number as we start to get small increases. 19 million and 18. Yeah, it, it, but, but it's a matter of the story getting out there, right? And I think this committee of how we change the way we're doing business to adjust to the new realities of where we are. And, you know, does that mean we should be charging more? So some people should be charging less. <laughs> Is it more free parking? I don't have the answers. I, I much of the questions that I think we need to be looking at that I think we have to operate differently. Yeah, I mean, from a rate perspective, we're still under whatever the market is. So the private sector's places are still charging more. Um, 
I think we have opportunities as things look to potentially invest in downtown to entertain deals of some type to entice people to come. I mean, we haven't been in that mode for the kind of several years leading up to COVID because we were kind of more impacted. We were in the offerings of deals like we were, say, the five years prior to that where we were like, hey, please stay downtown, please come downtown. And then we got to a point where we were like, hey, we're packed and we're looking at opportunities to charge more and restrict, you know, like your, you know, developments, private facilities, because it just was the mode, but now we have capacity. So I think, you know, there's potential that we're looking through that lens like we did, you know, five, 10 years ago, as opposed to. Uh, also about like doing business differently. I want to share with everyone when we talk about this morning. Like how operational. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you're teeing it up. Like I'm not ready. Oh, is this the uh, staffing? Like how operationally we did changes that resulted in big savings. Yes. Yeah. If you were my head, it's uh, operationally interesting. That's good. But I expect that, right? You know, and, but to me, it's the revenue model. And, and you know, I, I look at the convention center and, and business is way down. But frankly, it goes in the cycle. Right. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, and Days it's, gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So some weeks it's busting out. In other weeks, there's nothing. And how do we have this dynamic pricing model in place that can not gouge people, but take advantage of those situations? Where people are going to a sold out convention center, they're willing to pay twenty dollars for parking. They already do that. Wait, so if you want to make sure, but oh, it's yeah. not just in the in the parking garage for the convention center. It's frankly a, some of the other areas that are around it to make sure that we're. Can we do that? I mean, so the surface lots. If there's a large event, we start charging ten, fifteen, twenty dollars. Just flat. So just to pull in, you pay the maximum amount to park on those days when there's a big event. Obviously, the Market Street Garage on an SAP Center night where there's a large enough event happening, we charge ten dollars flat rate. There is no night minutes of free parking during those times. Um, outside of that, when nothing's happening, you do get those ninety minutes of free. You do pay just small dollars. The convention center, although it doesn't have the ninety minutes of free parking, it does charge incremental rates on the day. It does have the validation program from the techs with our captain five dollars on those non-event days. Uh, so I think we do a decent job of it, of it, but we have not gotten to a point where we're like in the moment dynamic um, and have been challenged with that model and how to communicate that. Yeah, communication is hard. Yeah, I agree. You know, if I'm rolling up to a meter and I'm expecting to pay a dollar an hour or whatever the, the meter normal rate is, also, it's five dollars now, right? With that, that and you're already out of your car because you're in the meter, right? Your behavior's not going to probably change in that moment. You're just going to go f, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I probably know it's going to be like right. Yeah. <laughs> right. The reality is, I wouldn't know until a week later or a month later. But sometimes that happens because I'm just putting the credit card into the thing and going. I'm yeah. not really looking at the display. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'm not the more. But so we have a menu of options. Many times it's you know predicated upon you know distance from an event. You know, you can get 90 minutes of free parking and still go to the auto show for two hours and walk around or you know, some you know time-based event. Or you could just pull up and pay the $15 and be super proximate. Um, you know, we have those those options. The different tiers from surface lots to the on site parking relative to the convention center. You can park for free in a meter and still go to a uh, Sharks game, uh, walk a little ways if you want to do that. Some people do it. You can pay the $10 and park in Market Street. You can pay the $30 and park on site at the arena. So, you know, there are, there are options. And yeah, you can certainly take some of that into consideration as we, we move forward and would welcome any. Ideas. Just a couple of questions. So, really, if if the new normal is fifteen million and not nineteen, 
that's part of what you're saying is how do we get back to 19, right? Uh, maybe, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Or how do we reduce our costs by 4 million? How do we reduce our costs or a little bit above? What's our service model? So, you know, are we trying to increase revenue? Or, you know, or, right. you know, or are we trying to increase right. people going to our businesses? Right. So, so to it, me, I'm torn. The most, we, the, most important, that line, right? the most important thing, I think, everybody knows capital, right? A S A A S T L E. No. Castle is a company that does swipes on big business buildings, and they do a national report on who's coming back to work. Right? San Jose has had the lowest back to work rate of any city in the United States, lower than San Francisco. And that's not something that the downtown association or the mayor wants to chart, you know, stand up and shout about. They found a report in Pittsburgh or Philadelphia or something that made us look good. I don't blame them. It's a marketing run for us. Does everyone know our? Can I introduce you, Lou? Sure. This is Lou. Louis. Yeah. Louis. Louis. Me too. I was calling you Lou for some reason. That's okay. And you're officially now on our. Are you late? Are you, late. are you a visitor or you have you been? Uh, no, I'm officially not. Uh, as I don't believe the council has. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do that. So I know you had applied, okay. as far as I understood. Um, so we just also so to the you're a visitor. Board. I guess. <laughs> member Who's the, the someone? <laughs> Finally, a member of the public. Getting our, a very interesting member of the public. Um, but but so Castle is telling so. People aren't coming back to work, and in, 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 in there's 10 million square feet of office space and 40,000 workers, and only a third of them are back. But Zoom has now said you got to come to work two days a week or something like that, or three, and so they're starting to come back. So maybe that 15 goes to 16 or 17 when those businesses start to come back in a year or two, I guess is what I would say. But does it get back to full employment? Not until somebody leases a million square feet that Jay Paul just finished at the corner of Park and Alameda, right? When that thing gets, that's going to be your indicator that the world is back on its axis, in my opinion, anyway. And you know, there's a couple of businesses, big businesses downtown that have left for Santana Road. So, um, you know, it's not a happy picture overall, but I think, I think we're at 15 million for a long time. For at least two more years, and not at the 19 we were in. And so, if if your question is how do we address that, I think that's what you're kind of saying, isn't it? Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you for making you know uh, it's unclear what I was saying. Um, th it is do we raise rates? So, are we trying to get the 15 back up, or are we trying to get the expenses back down? It, to me, it's old. It is where we. What's our mission here? Yeah, I see it more as what's the mission? Where are the opportunities? You know, okay, and, um, got it. I think our minds are open when it comes to kind of that business development model that we play in the downtown relative to having parking available to those that may need it, whether they're you know, exceeding what they're being allocated in a building or they don't have an allocation within the building. I think a lot of Think about a lot of the properties that don't actually have parking in a store they rely on the city so we are there as a backstop for those types of properties so that we can facilitate filling them um, and then obviously for the, the visitor crowd having a model in place like we do now uh, to facilitate those now in my capitalist mind you know i don't love the free parking model but you know it certainly serves its purpose and i think there will always be conversations around is it the right, right amount of time is it the right amount of subsidy if you will is free is there some element that pays for it or you know is there so those are things in the, the switchboard or levers that we can play with um, i certainly don't believe there's any contemplation of making any changes in the near term anything that we currently have we can just remain Open and available for business if and when those folks come call. I think I like the free parking model like we have it. If I need it, it. So even if it's just 30 minutes, it's a psychological aspect. Yeah. You yeah. get something for free. Oh, no. No yeah. doubt about it that we'll 
that was paramount in our mind when we kind of came up with that in lieu of the validation model. And then, hey, come downtown and get a validation, but you can stay this amount of time for these days and this amount of time on nights and weekends. And then if it was a holiday, you could do this, but you had to go to this type of business, not this type of business. I mean, beyond confusing to try to get a message around, you know, making it easy. So no doubt about it. It's just this amount of time is free. Everything beyond that is either on the consumer or the business has the opportunity to extend it. The only thing that I would like to see moving forward, and I think with more modern technology, it will be possible that you are charged for the amount you occupy the spot from. But in other words, you know, right now it's more the kind of, well, I want to go for dinner. Do I need an hour? Do I need two hours? You know, it, that's specific to on street beer. Yes. Because you do pay for how much time Correct. you occupy. But I'm talking about on, on street, right? This is what I would like to see. For example, I need more time or I need less time, and you just charge the amount of time you're there. But again, you know, this is you know something more for the future. You have to know when the car came and went, though, right? Which is sensors. Yes. Or you can put in for an hour, and if you have the app, you can upgrade your payment while you're still in. Yeah. Your sure. yeah. But most people don't know about that. Fortunately, no one knows about. Uh, and don't about it either. Don't we get, you know, mm -hmm. we get services that use the system on a regular basis? So we have an app. Oh, people have, use it. Yeah. You can yeah, yeah. pay at the theater. Like, uh, yes. Yes. Passport. Okay. And it's in your reminder when your time's getting close. If you oh, want to add good. more yeah, to it, cool you can. Yeah. Can. I need to check that out. But the price is based on the $2 per hour. It's not dynamic. It's No, but at, at least if you have the possibility, to extend your time. Oh, yeah, you want that would be great. Yeah. And do you think the 903 uh, minutes needs to be publicized a lot more? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, the amount of people that don't know about it is stunning. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm not going to say the word. <laughs> so we got it on all 13 of our. Yes, you do. Well, yes. I drove by the convention center sign. It's done. Again? Yes. Uh, so at least 12 of the signs on the downtown association. And we'll be in the video. Yeah, we just need to keep being that drum on them. I know it's on the front and center on our Park District website. Um, it's on all the digital boards that enter the garages. I would consider entering into a partnership with this shape Foods or somebody who can get the word out more wildly than, than just the boards and the website because people aren't referencing those. Items. It needs to go somehow viral to other markets so that if people don't come to downtown. Yeah, I'm pretty good what you um, Yeah, I have a, well, I don't know if I should tell people this, but I, I thought about going to the city council meeting, but I was trying to get a, an appointment for the beginning of the meeting and not have to wait to the end during public comment and stand up because who knows when that is, right? And stand up and, and tell them and tell the call the council members to put it at the top of their newsletter. So I'm still working on that. I'm working on the board's office right here. Well, I got to go do them all. I mean, we've got downtown with it's the people that aren't in. So I'm still working. I'm going to do that next Tuesday. I thought about doing it yesterday. I didn't get to. I never know when the meeting's going to end. And the public comment is the very end when everybody's asleep. So, so it's like you're building. So, so and, and you're right. You need to put it in all the newsletters because the downtown, we don't need the park people coming here. Right. right. So it's really the, the people coming from, you know, other. So I may do that with your, with everyone's permission here. I may just go ahead and do that. Wait until the end of the meeting. <laughs> but also, you could publish it there on other social media, like next door. But you know, that's you know where the downtown association comes in, and then they're full. They play. I know they're they do have presence in social media. That certainly isn't my expertise. So that's what we defer to them to do those pieces. I don't know what the right vehicle is. I know having one of the signs is nice. I, I mean, still like my huge sign on the side of the side of the markets in Pedro Garage. But my one I failed on that one. My <laughs> one comment <laughs> around interest voting 90 minutes of free parking. It isn't don't promote come downtown there's 90 minutes of free parking. You're promoting the activity. So come downtown 
to go to Hotworks because it's an amazing, you know, gym and you can do this, this, and this. And oh, by the way, there's 90 minutes of free parking. Just saying, come downtown and take your car here and sit in it for 90 minutes. But, I mean, that's not what is going to resonate. So if I go on next door in my own, you know, community and say, please go downtown, you can get 90 minutes of free parking. There's got to be the mayor. What are you going to go do? Please go to this restaurant. It's awesome. And oh, by the way, you know, so I put a little onus on the business owners, you know, to promote themselves and the aspect of the park. I think you need to go both roads because I know people who say, when I say, why don't you go to Dunno? There's no parking. Well, you know, there's this nice restaurant here. There's this business there. It's more the kind of, but there is no parking. So if I promote that it's free parking for 90 minutes, then of course, you know, oh yeah, now I can explore this and this and this, the other business. This is what I'm saying is that I think you need to go dual routes here, for both routes. I agree. You know, you want people to want to just hang out downtown, right? They'll explore and they'll find what they want to be there. But uh, sometimes it, it's the monetary aspect. You, people love getting something for free. Yeah, that's it. Okay. As chair, I say we move on to the next topic. And Louis, if there if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to you know, jump in. Well, can I just let you why Louis here because I kind of grabbed him by the throat so let go and I said, Would you please join Marky Board? And he said, after much many drinks and a lot of hitting him over the head, he said yes. And I think the downtown association has now certified that and so yep. he's gonna be our downtown for those who don't know this. He's going to be our downtown rep, but it sounds like there's a couple of steps in the city process. Imagine that before he actually is officially certified because this is the city board and you have to get the permission of all 11 council members or at least six of them. So it By could be year, as soon no. as, well that, well, that would be the last question. Is this, do you know if this is agenda for a future meeting? I meeting? do not. I was going to follow up with the clerk's office. It's outside of our purview. So I know he mentioned that the application in, I'll confirm with them. I understand that they typically bundle multiple applicants yeah. to bring the council as opposed to just one-offs. Yeah. Um, so I'll check and see when they've got it. So, so let me know when that time is, if, if you could remind me of when that's on the agenda. I'd appreciate sure. it. So back to the yeah. sure. So 22, 23, so year end. So we talked about the revenue side of the house. So operating expenses. Uh, uh, operating no, already uh, no, we already have uh, ten point three million, eighty three percent of our modified budget. All of those savings were on the OT side of the house, four hundred fourteen thousand due to staff vacancies. Uh, we're actively recruiting for some of those. Some of them have already been filled since year end, uh, and then our contractual services one point seven million, mostly in our parking operator side of the house. I think we've had these conversations kind of year over year. The contract of value is X. We internally budget, you know, more realistic on what we're there, but we do afford ourselves the ability in city's overall budget up to the contract value of the expense. So we'll almost always see some variance there on the positive side for us and that we're spending with us. Um, big chunk of that is that the contract was signed in an era where we had staff in every single garage sitting in those little offices or booths from 6 a.m. till 3 a.m. And we've pivoted to a model where we have the command center, that we call it over here at the Fort San Fernando garage. It's staffed, I don't want to say 24 hours, but 6 a.m. to 2 a.m., seven days a week. And then we have staff roaming the garages, either cleaning them, management staff at individual facilities. We have security in addition to that, of course, um, and doing the money collections and the cleaning. So we're out in the field, but we're not just sitting at each one of the facilities. How many security calls do you get in a week, a month? Security specifically? So that was something that you have I signed up now. Or Oh, the dispatch. Yeah, yeah, we've always had dispatch numbers. Thousands of incidents tracked and reported 
in a month. Yes. Yeah. Now, the vast majority of those are the guards coming across somebody loitering, and they're asking them to move along, sitting on the stairwells. But you know, so they're out and about. So the vast, vast majority of those, and then we get the you know vandalism to vehicles, vandalism to our own property, graffiti, you know, stuff like that. Those we get a report every. We get a report yeah. just about every day of the total activity, and then we reconcile that stuff on a monthly report. Are there any like serious ones that are so willing to share with us? Now, knock on wood. By and large, the facilities are very, very safe when it comes to actual like crime against individuals. Unfortunately, there's the vehicle smash and grab stuff that is just prevalent, not just in our facilities citywide. It just happens, unfortunately, and we're doing our best to you know put the people in the right places. But even when our people are in a facility of tens of thousands of square feet and six or seven levels tall, if he's in stairwell one on the east side of the garage and something happens on level you know, two on the west side. We're just not in there all at once. But uh what are the bad garages that I should stay out of? Um <laughs> bad, bad garages <laughs> from a there's more transient activity I'll say at Fort and San Fernando. Uh yeah. proximity to some of the yeah. you know food distribution sites over here on Fifth Street, you know, creates an element of people just kind of hanging out um from a Smash and grab with all the drug stuff was happening. Where? where? Seven Eleven. That's one block away. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the loitering and that kind of activity is at highest concentration there. I see the highest number of they got to move along. Smashing grab, like broken windows, stuff like that. I'd actually have to look. I, I'd say it's more evenly distributed, unfortunately. Um, Maybe can we get for the next four meetings a quick summary? Yeah, and that's my one item that I wanted to talk about just as we look to our next work plan. If, if the board agrees, I would like to look at us maybe pivoting away from, hey, let's stare at our capital line every single meeting for, you know, because there's not a whole lot happening. Some of these projects are three and four years, but there was an era where people were like, what if you want to see every dollar spent by month, you know, is focused on that. And I would prefer to get into here's some of the activity stuff that we're actually doing in the downtown as opposed to hey, we'll make 13 million. Yeah, and utilization of the projects, because I think that comes in, you know, what I'm assuming San Fernando is a lower utilization garage. Yes. And that's what the van means. That's what the incidents happen. Uh, there's less eyeballs around. It doesn't happen. Yep. There's less eyeballs. Yeah. Yep. So um, we can make it that's that's where I'd like to get us in more of the, you know, here's kind of what's happening as opposed to here's what's happening with dollars and cents. I know it's important, but I think if we can help those two times a year, you know, budget season and the year season as opposed to, and, you know, maybe a big year type thing, I think we can make transition. Just on the operating expenditure side, when we built out that in San Fernando office for the kind of control center, and I would welcome any time you guys want to see it, and maybe we could even schedule it either before or after our meeting, if it just makes sense because everybody's already here, or anytime you want to come, we can show you the space. It's pretty cool. Um, and just show you how it operates all the facilities. Um, but we've spent about a million dollars, which at the time was like a big chunk of money. And when I had penciled it out and sold it to my directors and stuff to say, hey, I think there's a viable model in doing something like this, I was super concerned and said, I think we can pay this back in three, three or four years by reducing staff levels at some of the facilities and going to this model. I think we paid it back in a little over a year. Pandemic, obviously, you know, was a part of that equation and that just the activity wasn't there. But having two or three people work for, you know, 18 hours, 20 hours versus 10 people was quickly, especially as the cost of staffing continued to increase over the last four years. Um, do you get a bonus? 
I get 25% of everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> this recorded? <laughs> <laughs> uh, June court? Yeah. <laughs> so the transfers were a million, 1.1 million. Those are, and I think we talked about those always in the past. Those happen right at the beginning of the year, scraped right off the top. Uh, our debt service. P bid or general fund transfers that we give them, and then there's some money towards the uh, downtown associations efforts around the ice rink, which I've heard is coming back again this year. It is, um, it's a whole other thing. No, it's, no, it's coming back to ice. ice. Yeah. It's back. It's ice again. Yeah. 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 So we got an outside operator. Yeah. Uh, he, he responded that he would not be able to make it today. Um, we transferred 1.8 million uh, to our capital program. We'll touch on that a little later. Debt revenue was 3.8. Significant part of my budget due to the increase in revenue and the savings on our expense side of the house. Our change to our fund balance was increased by 2.1 million. The ending fund balance, as it sits right now, is 9.3 million. Um, next slide. <laughs> Apple, I know David would like the uh, fourth page one. Actually, this is another one that should have printed in the landscape, and uh, it didn't for whatever reason, so it's painfully small. <laughs> we have this one here? Yeah, because you can put yourself online. So that just highlights a little bit better as to the performance of the garages. The, the revenue side, I think, is 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 accurate. It's, it's the, the expense side. Never a perfect equation for us. Obviously, the direct expenses that happen at the garages from our operator, from our security services, you know, maintenance activities, and those are direct. And then there's lots of spread expenses from the city side and from other operator activity management personnel and stuff like that. Let's see the, from the revenue side, the market street, the convention center is still carrying the, the weight. Um, obviously the convention center, not quite back to where it was pre pandemic. Second, San Carlos, surprisingly, is back. I think it's bolstered by the, the, the government activities over there. You know, they've been back for a long time. I feel like it's a trial. Both of them. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what should be garage to be Number one, I, I, I'm trying to figure out utilization. Um, the 350 seems very, very low. It's it, 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 a lot. It is very. Um, I can quickly. Get that for us. Let's see. Yeah, the revenue is an indication of occupancy. Reduced so I mean, that's yeah. another way to look at it. From San Jose State's perspective, and the student activity, totally different than pre pandemic in terms of the model of students on campus, or is it? Relatively the same because I know there was obviously this hybrid. Year yeah. Year. So, so before we were probably ninety percent, you know, in person type of uh, you know classes, you know, and, and some hybrid. Uh, then we went, you know, completely, you know, dark. You know, in terms of pandemic, then we're back now. It's probably sixty-five to seventy percent in person. So, uh, you know, it's probably twenty plus points. Uh, so it's still less people. Yeah. You know, on campus, but. You know, you come around uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, to try to find a parking spot at 9 a.m. You can't find an uh, And so we used to have a significant number that park in the It's not uh, But, you know, the, the barrier there uh, has always been road right? That, that 
the rotaries there for that blessed hour, you know, uh, you know what was it? Like some we use, oh, you know, no, it's just Wednesday. Well, for, Wednesday. Every, well, every Wednesday right, from but it blocks. Well, we too, basically. Right. Yeah, but if we manage that, so we'd be able to accommodate that one. The variety is we lost I all mean, the San Jose students that used to look for. That was I mean, and what's also happened is our students used to take, you know, probably 40, 50% of our students were taking BTA, right, between buses and light rail. That plummeted um, during uh, COVID, obviously, but it, it has not come back. And so that's causing you know ETA having their issues, but what it does puts pressure on people who are driving work on campus. And, and so they're circling looking for spots. Um, Mary, I, I'll talk to you offline. I, I, I think we need to figure out a deal between us. That kind of, uh, you know, I'm renting the fourth street garage room. You know, and, and figure out how this is a win-win for both of us. Uh, you know, the numbers are this low. You know, there's a price point for both of us that we can figure out. Yeah, I mean, we and that's that an open public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, I mean, we, we have a good one. You know, maybe at yeah, the, the, the prices that are. Yeah, so we, we previously offered a San Jose State permit, which was at I think fifty percent of the level rate. Semester. What's the semester? Semester, semester for now, it's 75. Yeah. So, what's the semester? Uh, what was that? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was a fixed fee for the semester. semester. Right. So, we have the ability within our rate schedule and the director. So, TOT has the ability to effectuate that rate. We had killed that rate probably right before the pandemic. And then the activity just obviously evaporated. We have brought back in or So, we can certainly work with you on yeah, that. I, I think we do. Uh, in, in, my idea, and I'm not even here, so I apologize, guys, if I'm not the last person. But if we made that our faculty garage, right? Uh, like, so a lot of our buildings are up, you know, I'll say faculty, a little bit closer to that corner. You know, it, it's at a different rate than students, right? But, you know, frankly, maybe that's a way to get the library engaged, our faculty walking through the library. There might be something there that guarantees a level of revenue uh, for the city. I like that with students, honestly, just because of that cyclical, like for people walking and coming and going. Well, the faculty yeah, are I mean, they, 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 they do they come for class and right? leave, right? Right now, say all day. So, no, it's, they're not a nine to five you know, type of thing. Um, it's worth exploring, yeah. whether it's the, on, on my side and your side, and whether it's students or faculty, or maybe it's just a free for all. I don't, you know, that, that could be it too. But I think there's a mutual relationship here that we need to figure out more from my beginning comments of changing the model of how we do things. So it's the same with parking meters around the university, right? We got to figure out how to charge more on those meters because you know it's taken away from. My parking and your parking that, that's around there. Uh, I think there needs to be more neighborhood assigned parking because I think students are monopolizing street parking in neighborhoods uh, that residents are in our parking in that area. Which is true because I just live, you know, across the street. And you know, we hard to find parking yeah. as a resident or for your guests. Unfortunately, you right. 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 can open and put signs, but that's not a thing. Right, right. 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 Is the school ever going to go from 65, 70 back to 90, or is the long term vision mm -hmm. to keep it at the lower 70% no. as far as people? It, it, so we have to, you know, like every other business adapts. And, you know, it's more and more students want to have a virtual experience. Okay, they, I just asked. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's bad or good. No, no, I think you have to adapt. And I think labs and, you know, certain things have to be in person, right? I think we all understand that. but you know, um, do you do hybrid classes, classes now or some there and some can you just dial in? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, so I, mean, I was thinking all that'd be a boon for downtown. I didn't go here, but I would have been out way later. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have to actually go to class. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. I have a trustee that's showing up. Thanks for you. Thanks for your right to try. A big one. It won't be a big one, but yeah. <laughs> Since we're at the end and you're here, maybe I can just capture a motion and a second on this item. 
Second. There you go. Do I have any uh, comments from any of the virtual attendees? Oh, we are muted. Oh, I'm muted. Blair, if you'd like to comment in any way. Hi, thank you. Blair Beekman. I couldn't find the raise the hand signal. Thank you. No uh, yeah, it was a interesting meeting for myself. I really needed it. Uh, you know, my feelings of tech accountability and its openness uh, to work on open public policies, I think, can really lend to the issues you were talking about today. I mean, as you were talking about your issues, I would, you know, and how pe and people having conversations, what they're doing uh, after they park, well, you know, wh where they're going to go to dinner, you know, those sort of issues. I really like the uh, idea that they think they can think of the idea that there's open public policies, uh, you know, as they park their car, they can rely on. And that that in itself can make a good conversation, you know, that, well, you know, we can always ask about what sort of AOPR practices are being used with all the tech and such. And uh, I, I think that's an important addition to uh, for a future of building a city and what makes a city good. And so good luck in those efforts. Uh, I think I've described that before. And uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, boy, I, I really needed to hear some words today, what you're, what you're doing and the work I'm doing to uh, understand issues of uh, where there's a new uh, development of ALPR use in San Jose and in San Diego and in, in, in Oakland and major cities of California. There's a big push that we are uh, in some degree, you talked about smash and grab issues that uh in some degree that smash and grab is being better addressed overall and violent crime is being addressed overall. Numbers are being reduced. But what I learned so importantly today that there is still issues need to be considered and worries. And I'm trying to figure out the balance of uh, ALPR use that San Jose has just applied for, how that conversation can take place uh, that we don't have to do possibly immediately a, a whole bunch of new technology because I think technology is already in place doing the job. And it's a matter to have that conversation, if we can have that conversation and not just simply dump in a, a whole bunch of new ALPR tech in use. Uh, we're headed for at least 200 new ALPRs by the end of next year. That's a lot. Hey Blair, let me, Blair, I'm sorry. Ready to head out, ready to head yeah. out. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So where are we at? Five is the B. Oh. Ruby, any comments? Uh -oh. Hi. Yes. No, I only want to say that we need to consider also the biggest amount of wealth that can come downtown at night to spend money is the senior wealth. And there's no place really for us to have a fine mayo. The Fairmont's gone, the Hilton's gone. No good restaurants. We no longer have a symphony. I like the fact that the city is trying to upgrade the museums and you know bring us down there. But you really have to focus on something more than students in the city. And I thank you for giving me this time. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. The on street theater report. Okay. Or <laughs> any your list. So this is our uh, yearly update about the smart meter revenue. And just to give us some background for uh, you know for those of us are not aware of what this how this came about. In 2017, 18, uh, CP didn't have uh, all smart meters across what we had before downtown and uh, the exterior and sofa district mostly was uh, corn only. So we invested at the time in expanding uh, to all smart meters where we introduced credit card, pay by phone, NFC payments. And uh, tied to that was the increase in the exterior meter area, and, uh, parts of sofa. Uh, for the, the rates from a dollar per hour to two dollars per hour. And uh, so that's where this is, this level stamp. Uh, and uh, after that, 
the laws for the increased revenue we expected that uh, we can uh, recover the cost of this upgrade in 2018-19, but this didn't happen, 1920, but this didn't happen. And as of last year, we still have a remaining balance of $55,491, which we carry into 22-23. Uh, revenues uh, in some areas in the exterior uh, increased. Uh, like for example, in so far it went down. It went up uh, uh, to 944k from 680, and uh, in uh, in the exteriors. Uh, in the, that's in the exterior. I'm sorry. So in the exterior, it went up from the 680 to 944, but. We need to keep in mind that this increase does not reflect like a major increase in the uh, activity because uh, in 21 22 we had what full quarter where the meters were uh, suspended for obvious reasons to encourage businesses to come back and people to come back and uh, after uh, COVID. Uh, so that increase is, is not like 30 percent actually in the revenue it's if we Take into consideration that one quarter, so it, it's about the same for the two years. Yeah, just to jump in on, on that, when I did just did the math, because I know we had done it when we were drafting the memo, if we took the 680 divided by three and then multiplied it by four, just to sort of cut most of our meter revenue is pretty flat across a month over month, then the total for the year would have been just over 900,000. So it's very close to the 944 that we did. Um, that we show. Yeah. Um, downtime for uh, saw an increase in revenue from uh, 17, uh, 1.7 million to, one, to almost 2 million. Uh, so, as a result of this increased revenue, we were able to finally uh, recover all the costs. However, East Santa Clara still have, uh, cannot support itself with the uh, cost of uh, uh, the upgrade. So we had to uh, take the $55,491 and split it across the other exterior areas, Japan, Town, and so and so far, to finally put this recovery uh, cost to, uh, uh, to rest. Uh, overall, though, the system system wide yeah, will take into consideration the expense the expansion cost and the annual ongoing cost uh, they are still below our historic base which is the second column in this table uh, that we were you we have used for several years now to to gauge where we are uh, as Charlie was mentioned what is the historic base so we're still uh, Below recovering the cost, taking into consideration the, the and the historic basis where we charge the top, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, so that's also like and it, it gives you an idea that uh, all activity all were the same. Will, the same would be much much. We would anticipate that from yeah. one dollar to two dollars. So the first column is at two dollars. The second column is at one dollar. Yes. However, there are signs, good signs for the outlook for 2023, 24. Uh, at least we're not, we're no longer decreasing in the, our revenue is no longer decreasing. Uh, we saw in this last quarter, starting July to now, we saw an increase. Uh, to 660 compared to 584 of last year in the downtown core and the meter exterior meter areas we saw about the same 150,000 compared to 140,000 last year. And I think that so as we move forward, I'm just going to be talking. So there's really four distinct meter areas. There's the downtown, Japan town, what we call the Pacific Center out by the old city hall, county buildings, and East Santa Clara. 
SOFA is listed here only because it was excluded from that early, early uh, implementation of the smart meters. And so they have their own cost recovery element attached to them. But as we go forward, we're proposing to basically go back to our four meter districts zones and not carve out a SOFA because it isn't a distinct area in and of itself. It's the downtown. And so um, since we're no longer trying to capture this cost recovery component of it, that we feel like it's time just to put the boundaries on these distinct separate areas. Uh, obviously, some are much easier because they are totally disparate. Uh, East Santa Clara, although there's meters that run the entire length of Santa Clara, there really is a line. Right. Yeah, again, but where, where does East, I was going to ask, where does East Santa Clara start? 10 to 9, yeah. yeah there's some, uh, nine, plus, so 9 through 10, somewhere in there. It doesn't yeah. matter, either one. Yeah. Um, and so, kind of like past San Jose State, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so there, that's when, I think, we, and now we don't have the expansion cost component of it uh, playing into this. So we we'll just have revenue historic revenue, our expenses, and a net number. Um, and remember, we also have the uh, arena meter revenue, which is not included in this, because that's this one. Those meters. They um, used to be like this be coming out anyway. The, the market yeah, we were expecting actually the Google project that they would go in a year or two. Gone, but it's that we paused, right? So we're taking that back to I do like seeing the metrics on SOPA, even if it's not considered a separate district. I, I, I'm fascinated to see what you know, what percentage of things they do make. Yeah, sure. Well, and you know, that may be something worth because. I don't want to put us in a position where I'll say the system allows us to, our data is more granular than this, right? Much more so. Like in our own system, we've got an area called what's San Pedro. Right? And those are just you know self-identified boundary lines so that we can create these little geographic pockets for our own system. This is meant to just just say district wide, but within a district, there is no area. So we could have downtown, and within downtown, have four zones, if you will. Um, and so maybe it doesn't necessarily play into this table. Maybe there's a secondary table that we can look at. I would get a little it. more granular. Yeah, it's just, just that because I think it helps inform the micro decisions that happen per block. You know what I mean? Not that we have it's actionable that we have to do anything as far as numbers, but I'm, I'm fascinated by that type of data. So maybe we can make a note to yeah, like to play with how we present this data in the next iteration, as long as we have some consensus around. You know, now that the expansion piece is behind us, and right, we clean up this table, but then have some other data sets yeah. behind. It's, so our revenue was 2.9, right? Which is close to the number in here, but not exactly the same, right? Uh, that would be attributable to like the arena meters, 903 versus uh, 903 uh, uh, sources. Right. right. And um, so the point is it's 2.9 in revenue and the expenditures are only 220. Those are the direct cost of running the meters. Understood. Not the staff, but I understand. I mean, and it's just right. Like communication and the three per meter, right? For uh, right, whatever system and whatever breakages there are. No, no, no. oh, that's not even counting that. No, that's just the straight. The base of the potentially not pull the thread uh -huh. on the ongoing costs because this number. How many much meter shop employees do you have? Uh, we have two full time, five part time. Those meter people yeah. got a billion dollars probably. Right. Expenses there. 
but then you have the actual repairs and uh, maintenance we're not uh, including the so the reason for not doing that and thinking of it as a, a profit and loss center uh, because the things this would never be possible i mean this was really to look at made x in a year where we charged a dollar we're going to charge two theoretically you're going to deal with revenue and it was a simple model to say how much is attributable just to that increase not necessarily an ops revenue and expense table to say how much does it cost us to operate the meters but do but does that include the the, the meter mains that people who come yeah that's the no. five people you know oh, okay. oh meter oh, uh, meter mains parking compliance no oh, that's yeah, that's general say, like, general like, general i general realize it's general fund the ticket price is everything else yeah. 42 dollars whatever you already definitely don't want those numbers to be yeah right <laughs> okay yeah revenue from uh Citations goes to general and mm -hmm. revenue funds. But, but this and the reason the, is because they pay for those people in the little vehicles, the right tickets. So the meter revenue itself goes to the parking fund, the enforcement of the It's more expensive. Was it deserved? Seven minutes we got <laughs> but we give you three minutes extra on the meter. We don't four that, that we don't so then that we was four people. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I made it was ten. <laughs> I risked I risked it. Which uh, for instance, if anybody doesn't know this, but Hillbrook's opening a high school in downtown San Jose, and it's on the other side of the 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 um, the uh, the church that's uh, I always call it the church that Solana prepared, but they're going into the they're building a gym at, at the uh, the old armory, and then they're taking over this Moore building or something like that. And in five years, they're going to have um, uh, four hundred students, and I don't know how many um, uh, teachers. They've already got thirty six students operating out of Adobe of all places right now, which is their freshman class. It's the old Victorian building. It's, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a, beautiful. Right, it's right. Pictures. From, it's incredible. From the Teskies. German hospitals, right? Certain Teskies on Safe Side Street. But um, they only have thirty-nine parking places in the back of that. So I don't know where they're going to park the people. I'm excited right. to charge them because you know what tuition is: fifty thousand dollars a year. I can't wait till I pick up the drop off for kids every yeah. day. Yeah, and you get those invites from every school. They the were talking all about trying to do stuff with ETA and you know, and you know, I don't know. But we were talking Mark Silver runs the school. That's where I got it. Two weeks long. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if it's deserved. <laughs> I'm paying you. Don't no worry. I thought it went the <laughs> It has to be you know. Cross the Um, and so we'll we'll briefly six A and six B. I think we'll bump together as much on this and go near and dear to Tamika. We can quickly touch on kind of where this leaves us in the conversation of reserves, but for the sake of continuity in the minutes, maybe we just slow roll it until we get to six. Even, do we approve the annual meter revenue memo? Uh, yeah, this is we don't have to find do we? we do. Three out of four people. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second. We'll approve. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. So are we moving on with live seat? Okay. That's really fast, right? Yep. Three highlights. Here so, uh, let's see. So, this is pretty much elevator up. It's, it's, it's the same stuff, but I do have some updates. Yeah. For you. So, 4.5 million for elevators. Okay. So, the agreement's been signed. The, the vendor is under contract and moving forward. Let me just see if I have a note because I paint somebody. Work in San Fernando, there's some work on the freight elevator that needs to occur there. Uh, that's happening in March. They're ordering all of the parts. There's long lead times, unfortunately, for elevator componentry. 
Third Street is April of 24, Market is June of 24, and Fourth and San Fernando will be August of 24. Um, this the start dates for each of them. Can you say that again? So Third Street, April of 24, start, Market Street, June of 24, start, August of 24 for the Fourth and San Fernando. Those are the three. Yeah. And completion. Sorry, what's the third one again? Four, four twenty four, seven twenty four, and eight twenty four, eight twenty, right now we're out. No, full breath. Completion is expected at the end of twenty five. So, and what you're doing is completely redoing the, everything. Uh, yeah. So new cabs. new interiors that are really hard for people to do all the things that they've been doing in them. They'll still do the things they do. It'll just make it easier for us to clean them right. and hopefully, you know, remediate the yeah, so, so, so they can't turn the rubber floor because now it'll be that. Uh, what's the warranty on these from these guys? Do you know? How long is the warranty, warranty against, against the nefarious acts, unfortunately? Yeah, but just work. Uh, the, the componentry and electrical stuff will have long, it'll have a long warranty and then a Ongoing service contract attached to all these. So, um, looking forward to getting our elevator situation back up and knock out to the key, keep it that way. So, Are you videotaping each? So, there is a project line here uh, security improvements, 1.265 million. That's to replace our existing surveillance system. But that's geared more towards the vehicle activity coming and going. Um, we do not currently have cameras and stairwells, and elevator lobbies, or elevators themselves. This may be an opportunity for us to explore those. But there's no scenario in which we're surveilling hundreds of thousands of square feet in our garages. Um, so we may look to expand in some key uh, pedestrian components that help in operations and safety. But I don't see us having surveillance cameras at every elevator. We just don't even have the people to watch, you know, this many elevators in real time to do anything with. Well, even watching real time just after the fact, you know, uh, if there are any assaults or anything like that. Yeah, you know, we have a crazy retention policy yeah. that puts uh, also a problem of capacity yeah. and the cost of cloud storage is coming down a lot. I know that was a huge yeah. issue for us in our is privacy system. privacy issue now? Let uh, me keep this down. We have to keep everything yeah. operating here. So really? you have 24 seven video over dozens and dozens of cameras. Yeah. The old system would have required us to have an entire server farm to sit this data on. Um, now, hopefully we get to a place where it's, it's gonna all be clean. I don't know, this is, you couldn't put a camera in the bottom level of every Entryway and we have and, those already. And no, elevators. What's talking about? Have these yeah. elevators? Uh, potentially. I mean, that there wouldn't be that many cameras, would it? And that you'd at least be able to identify people who are coming and going and then say, oh, that's a good idea. Like, I don't know. You just say, okay, 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 so maybe let's just say across the portfolio, there's 30 access points. No one's watched and all. We don't really watch it. I mean, the cops call me and they say, could you please go back and look oh, at your cameras? Yes, yeah, see for the sake of having something for PD, but I mean, so the homeless guy tagged the side of the garage with burning our elevator, but he's okay. unfortunately done. It's going uh, to change. change. Well, no, at some point, uh, that might change. And, you know, if it's the same guy over and over again, then you can. That, that's why I'm asking is because we, we have some problematic individuals in our neighborhood that have literally been stopped, uh, attempted assault with me, um, arson, and, and the only leverage we have is the fact that I've documented every incident. Uh, personally, photographs this this person, otherwise SUPD and the captain will give me time of day. Frankly, the care courts start next year yeah. in Santa Clara County. And if you look at the rules, it says if it's a repeat offender, for lack of a better word, a repeat offender, yeah. eventually then they start, they have the ability to then put them into the care court system. 
And so having the ability to identify those people. So it, it, yes, it's like a long-term view. Can yeah. you get these people away from your facilities? And if you know which ones have the biggest matching grabs or something, maybe you could put start with cameras at the four street garage, just at the entrances. So I think I, so we, all, as we no, go through this, we're gonna find out expensive. It's going to be very expensive. Well, if you do it the city way, you know, you can just <laughs> idle those things and stand there. I mean, they're, I can't go by the packages of China. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put them up there and I won't tell you. But so we will find out what our $1.3 billion is going to afford us. And if we need to infuse more money in this line item to get something above and beyond strictly just replacement. I, obviously, we're contemplating an expansion of it. It's just to what degree. You talk to some folks, of course, they want oh, cameras in every stairwell, every elevator, every, well, I don't every want that. parking spot. That doesn't serve any sense. Right. And then there's, but that's what we have currently, which really is just vehicle input and output. Where is this 1.3 number of security improvements kind of mm -hmm. towards the bottom of the paper? Oh, here we go. Oh, thank you. Oh, so 0.265. I think we're going to land somewhere in the middle or maybe towards the bottom quarter of the metric. I'm just curious. Just to do it and pick your worst spot or your worst garage and put, try putting a couple of pilot programs as yeah. they say in government. So, again, it, if this affords us the ability to put up some kind of wireless camera that can do this type of thing, which you all know we can do it at our home for $99. You buy a commercial enterprise type solution, it's going to be a hardwired camera. You run a conduit back to a server, you know, Ethernet cables running, you know, 10,000 feet across the garage. Like it's no, no longer idea. the $99 camera. Right. Has there been any thoughts of just putting dummy cameras in signage? Yeah. So the attorneys are really hating on that idea because now you're purporting a sense of security that doesn't exist in reality. And so we've kind of thrown that out over the last you know 20 years and every time we're like that's the same in our age or age now in which is questions about dumb cameras that we have to exist no don't do it. And yet when you put in that it's privacy. Yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that was one you have two more. Right, two more the garage facade on. which is the market street garage project. Uh, is that the one you showed us with yeah. these magnificent place scenario? <laughs> Sorry, I might need more cameras at this site. So we expect that to go to bid early in 24, January, February. They're kind of finalizing the spec sheet right now for the demo of the tile. Um, and the completion would be yeah, maybe summer, summer, the last summer of 25. So you have to be. Okay. Then big oh, one more. You only have one looking at the big dollar. Uh, moving on. <laughs> the downtown, greater downtown parking inventory. So we purchased property for right. the lot E site over by the arena, right? Yeah, I spent five million and ten dollars. We're finalizing the Spec and bid for the milligan, so that's going to be built out. That's 4.2 million sitting in that pot there. So, okay, so these have to be approved. No, it's we, can it's it's not. we can make the next one super quick. This is this is a legacy thing, so the name you can get rid of. There was a point in time where we really wanted to see what our five-year outlook was, what's the thinking five years from now in that capital. So what we do is we lay out our existing five-year, truncate the current year because that's already in work, and we add the fifth unknown year. And we leave it blank at the board at one point in time, said, we want input into each one of these project line items. So share, we share it. We have for the last four or five years and said, anybody got an idea? Um, here's now the time. We can make a note of it, and then staff will take that into consideration as we build out our five year. Don't know from anybody that's been around. Our five year capital program is very loose. It was out here every single year. We've got $10 million in year one and $3 million for years two through five. 
we just don't necessarily know uh, big projects that might come down or the direction the city's taking, whether it's more land acquisition in, in Iridon. Uh, you know, we didn't necessarily know about the impact of our elevator upgrades. You know, we were thinking it was going to be some R and M and not a complete overhaul, is what they were the consultants kind of recommended. So, admittedly, I would love to say, you know, this is going to be the outlook and we're going to stick to it. But in reality, we're more or less in one to two year tranches. So, I don't put a whole lot of weight into what we're putting in 28, 29 now. If there's some idea that the board has for us to take into consideration either next year, year three, or year five from a large scale capital project type thing, or even something small for us to, to look at. We can tackle many small things now if somebody had an idea that we just weren't aware of or thinking of. Um, we have a minor project line item, which is really fun to do those kind of small scale might be improvements or paving or striping or you know those types of things. So I have no problem with dropping this from the future agendas. Because I agree, you know, it's it's too far out. And I think we are more focused on the immediate actions. And this does, and so we all know the five year comes as a part of the city's budget. So when we write our annual budget to you guys and say, here's the budget, it's a requirement on the city side. You do have to do this. And we bring it to the board every year. It's just this one was like a precursor to that, only because there was some commentary in the past that we've well, already made the five year, and now we have no comment on what we're going to do. Um, so and I agree with what you said earlier. You know, we spend so much time with just looking at every dollar. Yeah. And I think it would be more beneficial for the board to look into more activity of what's going on okay. rather than just, you know, where do we spend $10 here and $25 there? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. We don't move the aircraft carrier. That increases the. That one is also just a discussion. I think Charlie's not here to argue about the numbers. So, uh, 6A and B, I think I'll tackle in one and we'll just have a dialogue on this one. So, the concept of the micro reserves or what model we may look to in the future. So, as we've said in the past, we met again with, with John. Then we are director and assistant director on kind of here's the current landscape where we find ourselves. Here's you know the histrionics, it, just a refresher, of course, of you know this conversation started in that 1819 kind of year. Um revenue streams are wildly different, unfortunately, from where we were in that conversation. They're not net positive currently. Uh, we understand that they are net positive in certain pockets, but just overall as a whole, they're not. And so we are not recommending to the city council or the development of that reserve today. We continue to report out on these uh, revenue streams in these you know, buckets and keep tabs of that as we go forward. One, um, it's not a concession, it's not a consolidation or consolation. It's really a change in maybe how we look at opportunities in areas outside downtown, which is where that capital project line really lives. Every single one of those is more or less dictated to the off-street element of our portfolio. It's most expensive to operate, but it requires that investment more or less. But there's a line item, if you look at the you know, capital line line items, if one of the greater downtown area, the multi modal meter district, a big old mouthful, and it was meant to, at a point in time, develop a bucket of money that could be spent outside of the downtown projects. And it's very loose intentionally to afford us opportunities to spend this money outside of the pool. The thought process is well, let us use that and the board to engage potential projects. And so at the direction of John, working with, do you know Eric Kahn? Working with Eric Kahn to say, what are some opportunities in these districts to invest this money in areas maybe where we historically wouldn't spend some trees, addition of trees, tree trimming, uh, sidewalks, crosswalks, 
Yeah. So those types of things are being explored for using some pieces of this money. Right. Um, now, I think there may be some little hurdles here over some of these expenses are not the city's expense to bear. Mm -hmm. Side watch of the adjacent property owner, tree trimming is the property, we like those things, but I think we're trying to create a nexus here to spend less money in those areas because some of the revenue generated without going through the step of creating these little reserves, which dependent on the mechanism and the map and creating them and equality across might be so small we never actually have money to do it. Where this one is really Let's come up with projects, let's hear our money, and it goes into a larger capital program. It could be a quicker path to actually accomplish things. So is this like the stop gap measure until revenues are a little bit? The thought process is in a way that yes, this could be something we could do well in advance of revenues being positive because it's who knows what now. may actually occur. And you know, again, when I say that mechanism of What's the equation to say, or what's the money? You know, there's different models. You know, if you look at the downtown association and what is afforded to them, on the basis of the total revenue generated out of the parking system in the downtown, it's a tiny percent. So if you apply a similar percentage to all of these outside areas, East Santa Clara's going to owe us money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're gonna get 50 bucks. Old, mm -hmm. old yeah. Civic Center, Japan yeah. town might get a yeah, yeah. yeah. 2000 yeah. might not even be enough to do something. So, this, if we can allocate or aggregate this money and put it into some projects, I think we might be able to accomplish something. So, Eric is taking it uh, the next step to start identifying what theoretically can be done, and then I hope that you know next year we could. I can monitor list this. Uh, so you know, I re I do recall the discussions about the percentage that went to the downtown association uh, compared to the entire whole. But my argument was back then is that whether it's increasing inventory, the white wayfinding, or the ice cream, all those things benefit the general downtown. So it's not even if it's the percentage going specifically to the downtown association was a pittance. The overall investment in downtown made up for that. So I'm totally fine with you know, making capital improvements because my my big concern is we have aging sidewalks. Our our landlords cannot afford to, you know, replace all of them. They're 100 years old. It is a trip hazard. Our organization, the business association, is paying for tree trimming itself right now. You know, that would be great to have some help, you know, on that front. Um, and our crosswalks leading from First Street to Fifth Street are completely degraded. I mean, there are huge chunks missing out of the crosswalks. I've, I've sent pictures to John. Um, it needs to be completely redone. Like the, the it's been patched with asphalt several times, but it's not even safe for pedestrians. So what we're we're having an issue with is not only are the sidewalks unsafe because of their condition. But the crosswalks getting into Japan town property safety is their condition. And it, because they're not clearly defined, people are flowing through them uh, as far as driving. So it's like we've made some minor improvements as far as like getting uh, stop signs at every uh, intersection. But the number of close calls are, are very significant. People are not stopping at Fifth and Jackson uh, or their heart stopping, full brakes, you know, because. It doesn't look like a very clean crosswalk. It's not as clearly defined as uh, the Soka District. So if there's any, I'm, I'm all for capital improvements because it's going to enhance people coming back to the neighborhoods, putting money in the meters anyway. Yep. yep. And so um, I was just looking over my email to Eric. He said he was going to be making some visits out and looking. So one of the ideas that I had thrown out was decorative lighting um, as another potential piece. That one got mixed. Yes. So maybe I apologize for even ask, bringing it up because I guess our ability to tap into the continued grid for this ancillary extra lighting. Is it, yeah, that, that's kind of a, it, you know, people have always asked, can, how can we add like Christmas lights to um, Japan? And I'm like, our poles do not have exterior 
you know, we're that's a non touchable kind of thing. We it understand looks that. like you identify like crosswalks. Like oh, yeah, people. yeah, yep. anything. And, and the trees we, we planted 50 trees in the last three years, we're kind of solid on that front. Tree trimming is kind of manageable right now. Banners, banners, I already replaced those. I've got brand new hardware up there too, so it's hurricane rated. We're not, ex we're not expecting any change on that over okay. at least five years. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the delivery trucks. That was your quake, right? The, the delivery trucks hit them, so they need to snap back. Uh, so I think, okay, you know, so the, are we done with sick? Or you have words? No, I, I just, in, in summary, is that obviously we're going to continue this report on an annual basis. Uh, you know, get a little more granular, I think, in that report. This table will be a little cleaner. We're just going to keep monitoring that. Model and keep those conversations in the ether, but not necessarily at the forefront, and kind of push on this looking okay, through potentially uh, the right. uh, greater downtown area CIQ line item. Okay, whatever doesn't get spent by June of this year, if we don't get anything off the ground by then, is the intention is going to carry that money forward. There's 50,000 to mark for next year, so we have 100. $15,000 okay. going into you know, July of next year. So, cool. That's six. Especially, I don't think our downtown yeah, person is scared to be here to say that. And I did that report, didn't I? Pretty much. Council committee agenda items specific to kind of this board. Um, a lot of stuff around vehicle lights and in vehicles, but that's kind of a citywide thing. Um, a city effort around those two items coming to council here probably early 24, so nothing specific to our operations, meters, garages, and lots. So, just with one question or comment, yes. as always. Uh, you know, like I said, I thought I'd go to the city council and Tell them to by the way, there's 90 minutes free parking. Why don't you put that at the top of your uh, newsletter you get up? Because I get most of them now. Most of them. And I'm um, representative from Gate 3 here. Well, I'm okay. just wondering. I know. Yeah, tell your they're colleagues not, in other my, districts they're not really them. my audience. And the point is, is all these things that we talk about here, is there ever an agenda item on the city council where it's just the downtown parking board? We'd like to give you an update on what's going on. <laughs> Maybe we should do that. And I'd be happy to stand up and, and tell everybody what a great job you guys are doing most of the time. And uh, uh, and then I wouldn't have to do it as a, so I'm going to work on that, if that's okay. Is that something you'd like to do to tell them? Like, you know, we did this command center and we saved a lot of money looking for extra work. I mean, we report out on our budgets and our finances and our operations right. relative to that. There's TNE is a city council company that annually we typically bring our work plan, super high level. Um, it's T &E. Okay. Transportation. Um, it's one of the committees of the city council, correct? But, you know, the, the granularity of what happens here on a quarterly basis is we bring elements that we go to council do my thing. On my own. Look, I'm here okay if I put it going and do it. It's a great job you're doing most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you do you, do. <laughs> I do me. That's the truth. I mean, really, people should know about this, especially. Uh, there is a risk, though. Anytime you bring so many things to the, to the forefront, it also brings in a lot of, it could bring in a lot of negative attention if people might start coming in going, well, why is this or this or this not addressed? And it might be outside the purview of the DPB, but we're going to spend more time educating people about that. I can't direct you. <laughs> you, 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 you might want to talk to Council Member Torres. You know, that, as, he is the council liaison for this board. You might want to. I would say a good portion of my volunteer time with the business association is just informing people of what we don't do. Because let's say we had our trees trimmed last week. 
somebody took it to the neighborhood association meeting and said that we're having our trees trimmed. So so many people in the perimeter were saying, I want my tree trimmed. <laughs> I'm like, you're not part of the business improvement district. I have to educate people. I saw my house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My backyard trees, really. You're technically not even in Japantown. You know, I mean, the amount of emails that I had to write just to educate somebody on the fact that they got the wrong idea, there is always... That's that chance. First, that is free at the top of the cruise letter. Okay, it's nothing else. <laughs> I said that is very true about what we don't do as part when we go to community meetings. Part of the uh, presentation is what we don't do <laughs> because people have an expectation about what you can do. And sometimes well, you know, it's not you don't see a lot of good. <laughs> okay. Anything right. else on the agenda? No. Nope. We're not going to see you till next year. Everybody have a happy holiday season or whatever you see from this. We will send out your agenda in late uh, February. Some people prefer boxing day. I'm not going to be in here. And now.